Welcome to On The Chain. Ex-SEC attorney shares a reason why XRP should be treated like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And quite mm-hmm. honestly, this a lot of digital assets should be treated the same, but we know the special treatment. And, and, and I really think when it comes down to it, Jeff, is it really just Bitcoin? Because Ethereum seems like it's kind of on the wall. It's not on the outs completely, but it's, I don't think it's in the good graces anymore. It seems like it's kind of fallen out of favor with the SEC I'm talking about. Which one, Ethereum or Bitcoin? Yeah, Ethereum. But Bitcoin's like, the, listen, you're not, you're not gonna you're not gonna chase down uh, Nakamoto. You're just not. It's not gonna be. Like, you're not gonna find him. So they just like, well, that's not like, gonna no, happen. It's not a security. But mining pools could be though. So a former attorney for the U.S. Uh, for the uh, United States Securities and Exchange Commission, best known as the SEC, John Barry basically came out and said that Ripple's digital token XRP is similar to the l- largest two cryptos. Bitcoin and Ethereum, so it doesn't really, it's not really suited for the Howey test, but the Howey test, I don't think anything's really suited for it. Is it Jeff, I mean, kind of, we keep talking suited about this. For, and, uh, I like talking about the Howey test, especially over orange juice. Yeah, a little bit of orange juice, maybe a little splash of lime, maybe a little bit of lemon in there. A little bit and of lemon, SEC, a little dash of lemon, nice. Yeah, so this ex-SEC attorney made the argument, recently surfaced video clip on YouTube in his comments, he said that XRP possesses some similarities with Bitcoin and Ethereum. He also spotted the differences mm-hmm. between the three digital assets, citing that all three do not fit for the Howey test. Therefore, John Barry implies that XRP is not a security, as opposed to the claims by the SEC, which led the ongoing XRP lawsuit that they filed That's, against Ripple. It's one more chalk it up, chalk it up in the cage match. There we and go. It's, you, getting, it's getting really heavily weighted on the side of Ripple at this point. Well, see, this is the so you know I have to tell you this. I've been on a. I put this tweet out yesterday. I think we have to get John Deaton back on her because there's something that I think we need to work. I, I want to see if John will come back on because this is like, like the, the way they talk about it here. Speaking of the Howey test, Investopedia describes it as the United States Supreme Court case for determining whether a transaction qualifies as an investment contract and therefore be considered a security, subject to disclosure registration requirements under the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934. But Jeff, we've brought this up, the whole idea in light of this latest uh, Supreme Court ruling where you had Virginia versus the EPA, they were saying like, well, the EPA just can't come out and make, make uh, can't make stuff oh, it's happen. Another it's another so, good one, yeah. We've had so, multiple, multiple good Supreme Court. So yeah, and there was, and then the other one, the Roe v. Wade, which they basically came out and said, look, it's not in the constitution. There's no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no law in the book. There's nothing that's, so we have to, we have, we have to kick it back to the States. So let's go on that premise, Jeff. If that were the case, then in 1973, they kind of corrected what had happened at that Supreme Court ruling when Roe v. Wade basically came out. They ruled on it. So they were basically making, instead of, instead of interpreting the law and making a ruling there was no present law but they made a ruling anyway very similar to the howey test the howey test is a supreme court case it's not legislation how is the howey test have how how can it how 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 job the howey test i keep going on about this yeah it would be great i I think it'd be perfect to have uh deaton on uh so we can hash that out really dig into it because i think it's you know could be a really solid point uh, you know, especially considering what we're seeing, the direction of the uh, the Supreme Court, you know, pushing things back to the state, you know, overruling on the on the EPA. And it really it's it's good to see because we have to remember, you know, that this is, uh, you know, a country of uh, we the people and it is a uh, constitutional republic, you know. And so it's uh, we got to remember, <laughs> we gotta, well, you know, it. sometimes people forget and they're like, oh, well, the federal government decides everything. And that just isn't the case, which is also then leads back to the problems with the executive orders. Uh, but in this case, since they set a precedent, you know, since that was the outcome of uh, that specific case, every case thereafter is referring back to it and referencing and saying, well, they applied this test and this is how they decided the outcome. But there was also some dissent in the how in the in the Howie case. There was, and yeah. the dissent had some really good, you know, uh, points that would then be very relevant 
uh, to what we're talking about with with the digital assets, especially you know given what the SEC is claiming about Ripple. But it seems I always feel like you know you know this this these things keep coming up over and over, and and John Deaton would definitely you know, know the answer to that one, but how is it, you know, another one to, to ask him, and I, I think we've asked him before, but how is it that, that Gary Genzer can only discuss one of the tenets of the Howey test? Just one point. Uh, that's right. You know, and it's not, he's not even accurate with it because he keeps referencing, um, if uh, people have, uh, you know, this, uh, idea that they're going to, you know, generate some sort of profit from it, then, uh, it, then obviously it's a security, but it's profit, from the efforts of others, you know, which is the, you know, the full read of it. So, it, you know, it could be interesting, you know, a couple of different points is that the SEC <clears throat> has been going about it all wrong. And then to your point, which would be the uh, Supreme Court would have to rule on it and they, they'd have to take up the Howey test. Well, I know which, he'll say is, well, he'll say, well, it's case law because based, but, but they're not referencing any legislation though. That's what my point is like, it exactly. came out, the framework came out of a case where when you have case law, it's, it's an, it's based on opinion. Well, and so-and-so versus so-and-so, this is what was decided. And that becomes, that becomes the, uh, you know, when they call it case law and that's what you can refer back to, but they came up with this framework in a case. It was, there's nothing that. I mean, you could say the Securities Act of 33, 34, but it's a little bit loose. By the way, did you know? Here's a little trivia question. Do you know who the dissenting Supreme Court tough. justice was? Uh, 1946. Yeah. Do you know who it was? Uh, uh, I don't remember. Well, let me put it up here for you. Let me toss it up there. Right there. Justice Frankenfurter. There it is. That's who it was. It was Justin. So Mr. Mr. Justice Frankenfurter dissented. His name was Frankfurter. Frankenfurter, yeah. Mr. Justice Jackson took no part in the consideration or decision of the case. He had Mr. So he had Justice Frankenfurter dissented. He said an investment contract is not a term of art. It's a conception dependent upon the circumstances of a particular situation. This came, this case came to us on a finding and authorized by Congress that the facts disclosed as an investment contract within the general scope of Section 2.1 of the Securities Act. So I think that's what they're referencing, but that's not the case before us. Hence, the assertment of the existence of the investment contract had to be made independently by the district court. Um, yeah, so this is this is some of it. Some of the investors visited their particular plots annually, making suggestions to care and cultivation, but without any legal rights. So it's interesting here because what they're basically saying is that it wasn't everybody that said, go ahead and work the land and make the money. The guy who invented the, the guy hot, who dogs. Invented hot dogs. That's right. Frankfurter. Frankenfurter. Frankfurter. Not Frankenfurter. That was from Rocky Horror Picture Show, I believe. But so you have, you have some investors. And this is what he's basically saying is some investors actually went to the land and they did themselves. That's why he was like, well, how are you rolling everything up to one? And again, what John Deaton always makes the point, it's the scheme, right? It was the packaging. It's not the oranges themselves. That were the security it was the way they put it together hey you'll make money we'll take care of the oranges we'll take we'll put plant the trees on your the orange trees not the confused with lemon trees on the plot of land we'll go ahead and pick them we'll go ahead and make the money we'll send you a check okay that was based on the efforts of others and that's what they're talking about what's Rai guy saying that's right so Rai guy saying unfortunately the xrp orders are so clumsy we all lost our ledgers and voting accidents <laughs> <laughs> oh yikes so in the, in that, the video that, that'll be the story anyways <laughs> john barry answered a question from the renowned litigator sean prosser he said sean said hey if ripple could have any defenses should the sec apply the howie test and the response was he said the sec i think is getting more aggressive xrp as a token is a lot similar to ether which is then similar to btc or bitcoin additionally remarked that sec has never brought a case against ether Ooh burn mm, and good. despite its similarity with xrp or despite um, the fact that they they did a raise uh they they basically ethereum foundation well, ethereum they, would have ceased to exist jeff if it wasn't for the raise they did well they, they even said that ethereum would have been a security in the early stages and then they say that it isn't now uh but how, how can you you know how, it, it's kind of you know it, it really is crazy and i think this is what's coming out right now this is what we're seeing unfold 
you know, within this uh, whole SEC v. Ripple case. And and when the judge is listening to the SEC's attorneys trying to, uh, you know, prove their case by explaining their way out of this, you know, just see, you know, they're tripping over themselves you know, through complete, complete incompetence, you know, and it's just hopefully it's complete incompetence and they're not, you know, just trying to drag this case out as long as they possibly can drag it out. Um, but I, I'm always going to reference back, though, you know, Gary Gensler brought up only one good point and everything that he said. And this is when he was in front of Congress. And he said that if if they really want to have uh, clarity, regulatory clarity on this, pass some pass a, some legislation through Congress. And he that's knows how we agreed. Right. And that's it. Yeah, and in the absence of that legislation, Gary Gensler is claiming that he has jurisdiction. Uh, but now we're seeing this fight between the CFTC and the SEC. And thank God that, you know, there's there's previous chairs and commissioners from the SEC that are standing up. And, you know, now obviously we see a bunch of, you know, of, uh, you know, previous SEC employees working on the Ripple case. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.